Let's practice graphing some ratios and rates on a coordinate plane given an incomplete data table where we're going to fill it in and then sketch the graph. All right, so for number one, we can see here that we have a ratio of these iPads to MacBooks. So let's go ahead and start by labeling those. So notice right away where the iPads are going to be labeled on the table as well as the MacBooks. Now the ratio here is going to be four to five. So for every four iPads we have, we will have five MacBooks. So notice we're given this original ratio of four to five here. So four is gonna represent the number of iPads and five represents the number of MacBooks. So if we're gonna go ahead and figure out the number of MacBooks when there are eight of these iPads, we can go ahead and set up a ratio here. We can say we have this ratio of four to five. That's gonna be what we have originally, right? And we also know here that there's going to be eight iPads now. So that's gonna be eight, and that's going to be on top of this ratio. So figuring out here, how does four become eight? Well, four times two gets you eight. So on the bottom, five times two is gonna get us that there will be 10 MacBooks, okay? so. So we're gonna go ahead and put 10 MacBooks here. So this ratio of four to five is equivalent to eight to 10, okay? Now we can go ahead and take this original ratio of four to five again. Now looking for this blank over here, what's this ratio gonna be equivalent to? Well, it looks like we have a 15 on bottom, so that's MacBooks, right? So that's 15, that's gonna go on bottom. And so to figure out how many iPads would go with it, well, we can say, well, five times three is gonna be 15, so four times three, that's gonna get us how many iPads there would be. Now, four times three is 12, so we know there's gonna be 12 iPads for every 15 MacBooks. Now, using this ratio again, let's go ahead and see, we can take this four to five ratio, but this time we have 16 iPads, so that's gonna go on top with the other iPads, and on the bottom, we have the MacBooks, right? So we don't know how many that's gonna be, but it looks like on top four times four is 16. So if we quadruple the iPads, we should quadruple the MacBooks. Five times four, that's going to be 20. So we have the ratio of 16 to 20. So, so every 16 iPads, there should be 20 MacBooks. All right, so doing this one more time for our last blank here. So we have 25 MacBooks. Now MacBooks are on bottom here. So let's put that on bottom. Now, how does five MacBooks become 25? Well, it's times five. So on top here, four times five, that's gonna be 20, right? So for every 25 MacBooks, we should have 20 iPads. All right, now that we filled that in, let's go ahead and label everything on the graph as well. So remember iPads, whatever's in the first uh, row here, that's gonna be along the X axis and the MacBooks, that's gonna be along the Y axis, okay? So let's go ahead and label this as X along the X axis and then Y along the Y axis. Once you go ahead and label the axes for iPads and MacBooks, make sure you also give a nice title. Then let's go ahead and label our axis. So I'm gonna say every line here is gonna be two. So I'm gonna make this a four. This one will be eight. This will be 12. This will be 16. And finally, this will be 20. Along the Y axis, I'm gonna go ahead and go by 2.5. So this one will be five on the second line. This will be 10. This will be 12.5. This will be 15. Skip one, this will be 20. Skip one more time, this will be 25. All right, plotting this four comma five, we're gonna go basically over to four along the x-axis and up to five. Let's go ahead and plot that point. Eight comma 10, right up here. 12 comma 15, right over here. 16 comma 20, kind of going up two boxes at a time just based on how we scaled it. And then 20, 25, those are those ordered pairs. Connecting each of these ordered pairs, we have a graph here that is a linear relationship, which is a ratio that goes through the origin. All right, here's number two. All right, for number two, we see the rate of cost at Chipotle is gonna be $9.72 for three tacos. Looks like tacos here are gonna be our independent variable. That's gonna be represented by X on the X axis in just a little bit. And the cost of the tacos at Chipotle, or $9.72 here, that's gonna be representing the dependent variable, and that's gonna be graphed along the Y axis. So we have this original rate or ratio of three tacos for $9.72. So we know three tacos are going to cost $9.72. So I guess the question is, is how can we find out the cost of one taco so we can figure out the cost of any number of tacos, right? So if we go ahead and set up a, another rate or ratio here, let's go ahead and see if we can find for just one of these tacos, right? And to get from three to one, you can divide by three. So that means to figure out the cost of one of these tacos, we can go ahead and take this $9.72 and then divide that by three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show this out. So we have $9.72. Let's go ahead and divide this by three. 
So three is gonna go into nine three times, so it's three dollars and something cents. Nine minus nine, that's gonna be zero. Let's bring down the seven. Now three into seven, that's gonna be two times. Two times three is six. Uh, seven minus six is one. Let's bring down this two. So three into 12, that's gonna be four times. Four times three is 12. 12 minus 12 is gonna be zero, right? So we know that one of these tacos is going to cost $3.24. So let's go ahead and put that in this first box because that's for one taco. Okay, so we know one taco is going to be cost, uh, costing the $3.24. So let's gonna go ahead and write that down. And let's see if we can fill in this uh, empty box right over here, right? So setting up this work here, we can see here that we have $6.48. And hopefully that is a number that kind of looks nice because if you double 324, uh, we're gonna get that. So if we double this uh, one taco, then that's gonna be the price of two tacos. So two tacos is gonna cost $6.48. Now we can use this unit rate or the rate for just one taco to also figure out what if we want to find the price of four tacos, right? So we can go ahead and say, okay, if we want four tacos here, what's that going to cost? Well, we can say, well, one to four, that's gonna multiply by four. So on the bottom, we can multiply this 324 by four, and that's gonna tell us the price of four of these tacos. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this 324 and multiply that by four. Now four times four is 16, I'm gonna carry the one. Four times two is gonna be eight plus one, that's going to be nine. And then four times three is 12. So I'm looking at $12.96, and that's going to be for four of these tacos. So go ahead and write $12.96. All right, finally for this last one, what if we have $16.20? So let's go ahead and set up our equivalent ratio here. The $16.20, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the bottom, right? And so how does 324 become 1620? Now you can totally take these two decimals and divide them, uh, but to save a little bit of time, I'm gonna tell you that it's going to be five right here, okay? And you could use a different number of ways to figure that out. Um, if you already know the cost of four tacos, you can add the price of one more taco and figure that out that way too. But if you multiply by five and five, top and bottom, you're gonna find out that's going to be five tacos for $16.20, okay? Um, you can also just keep adding 324 over and over again, or you can also take this uh, two and three and add adds to get five, and you can add these amounts and that'll also get you 1620. Or you can take one taco and four tacos, that adds to five tacos, 324 plus 1296 equals that 1620. So a few different ways to get these values. Next, go ahead and label your graph. So we label the x-axis and the y-axis. Also went ahead and put our tick marks in here. Jump basically by halves along the x-axis and by, I guess, a dollar and 62 cents along the y-axis, or you can go every other box is $3.24, okay? Next, you're just gonna go ahead and plot these ordered pairs down. So every taco is gonna cost $3.24 more. But if you scaled it similarly to me, then you should be going up these diagonal boxes to make your life a little bit easier. That would be the graph to represent this ratio. Here's number three. For number three, the ratio of chickens to ducks is going to be nine to six. Here you can see the ducks is going to be representing our X axis in this case, because that's going to be on the top row. The number of ducks here is going to be six. And then for chickens, that's going to be going along the Y axis, and that's going to be uh, represented by this number of nine here. So we have a ratio of nine to six. So every nine chickens, we have six ducks, or every six ducks, we have nine chickens. So let's see how we can use that original ratio of six to nine to help us figure out some other information. So we have original ratio of six to nine here. I know in the problem it says nine to six, but that's because chickens was written first. But if we have ducks on X, we're gonna put that first and Y on bottom right now. And let's go ahead and see if we can use this to figure out this missing piece right over here. So let's go ahead and say, well, we know there's going to be two ducks here, so let's put two on top. Now, how does six become two? We can divide by three. Now, if we divide by three on bottom, nine divided by three is going to be three. So it's gonna be three chickens for every two ducks. Now, what about when there are eight ducks? Well, six doesn't actually fit into eight nicely, so we can actually use this two to three ratio that we have since all these ratios are equivalent. So let's go ahead and use this ratio of two to three this time, okay? And let's use that to figure out what if there are eight ducks. So I'm gonna put eight on top here, all right? So how are we getting from two to eight, essentially? Now, two becomes eight if you multiply it by four, and if you multiply the bottom by four as well, three times four, that's going to be 12. So what we just found out here is we used a different ratio to help us. 
but we are going to have 12 chickens every time we have eight ducks, okay? Now, this is the simplest version here to have this two to three, so uh, we find that maybe more helpful in a lot of cases, so it's gonna take this ratio of two to three, and why would we maybe wanna use that one again? Well, notice how if you take this three for the chickens, this next one has 15 chickens, so that's kinda nice because three goes into 15 evenly, right? It's a factor. So if we know three times what is 15, it's gonna be multiplied by five, then we can multiply this two on top by the same thing to get the number of ducks, right? So three times five is 15, two times five on top is going to be 10. So whenever there's gonna be 15 chickens, there are going to be 10 ducks. Finally, to figure out this last blank here, we have this number of 18 on top. Uh, I don't think 10 is very useful in eight either, just because they are not factors of 18. You can either use the six or the two because they are factors of 18 and they're easier to use here, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use the six to nine here. So I'm gonna write that ratio of six to nine. Let's go ahead and use that one and see, let's go for this 18, that's 18 ducks that's gonna be on top. Now how does six become 18? You can multiply it by three. And so nine times three on bottom, that's gonna be 27. So we're gonna have 27 chickens when there are 18 ducks. Once you go ahead and label your x-axis, uh, I went by twos along the x-axis and I went by threes along the y-axis. Notice I only put the uh, every other four, eight, 12, uh, 16, and 20 just to save some time and space, but feel free to write them all down if you would like to. And then we're gonna go ahead and plot these ordered pairs. So uh, two ducks for three chickens is going to be right here for me. Then uh, if we go to six ducks and nine chickens, that's going to be up here. Then moving on, we have eight for every 12. Okay, that's gonna be here. Then I have 10 for every 15. That's gonna be right over here. And then finally I have 18 for every 27. So that's gonna be up here. Again, these ratios represent linear equations or linear relationships as well. So we should be able to draw a straight line just like that. Here's number four, last one. The rate of cost for ice cream is going to be $7.56 for four scoops of ice cream. Our scoops is going to be along our x-axis, that's going to be uh, our independent variable here. And our cost of the ice cream is going to be represented by y, so it's going to go along the y-axis, and that's our dependent variable. So right away we have this original rate of four scoops for every $7.56, so it's going to write four scoops on top and $7.56 on bottom. Now, whenever you have a price like this, it's a good idea to find out the price for just one of them because that can be used to solve for anything after that. And so we can go ahead and say, what if we just want one scoop here? How do we get from four scoops to one scoop? Well, we got to divide it by four. So if we go ahead and divide the 7.56 by four, we can find the price of one scoop of ice cream. So take this $7.56, let's go ahead and do that and then divide it by four. Four goes into seven one times, one times four is four, seven minus four, that's gonna be three. Bring down this five, don't forget to put the decimal up here. Four into 35, that's eight times. Eight times four is 32. Now 35 minus 32 is three. Let's bring down the six. Four into 36 is gonna be nine times. Nine times four is 36. When you subtract, you get a remainder of zero. So basically we find out that this would be a $1.89 for one scoop of ice cream. So let's go ahead and put $1.89 in this first box. Now that we know the price of just one scoop of ice cream, let's see if we can find out how much ice cream we can buy with this $3.78. So let's go ahead and put an equivalent rate here and put this $3.78 on bottom, okay? Now you can feel free to add or use division, but it turns out that if you double 189, you do get 378. And so what happens here is you double one scoop, you actually get two scoops, right? So two scoops here is going to end up costing 378. Now this next one's a little bit more straightforward for three scoops, how much is it going to cost? Well, let's go ahead and set this up. So let's put three scoops on top. So how does one scoop become three scoops? We just multiply it by three. So on bottom, you can multiply by three as well. So you can take this $1.89, that's for one scoop, multiply it by three for all three scoops. Three times nine is going to be 27, carry the two. Three times eight is 24, plus two is gonna be 26, carry the two. Three times one is three, plus two is gonna be five. So it's gonna be $5.67, and that's gonna be for three scoops. Let's go ahead and add that into our table. All right, finally for this last spot here, I'm gonna take our unit rate, 
which we know that one scoop is gonna be this $1.89, but what if we have $13.23? How much ice cream will that buy us? So it's gonna put this 13.23 on bottom, okay? Now to figure out how much, uh, how many times 189 fits into it, you can do division here, but again, I'm gonna save a little bit of time here and just tell you it's gonna be seven. Okay, so again, if you can feel like you can do the long division, then go ahead and do it. Uh, or you can keep adding 189 until you get there. Uh, that's another possibility, but one times seven is seven, so we know this is going to be for seven scoops of ice cream. Okay, uh, what's another way you can do it if you didn't wanna do some division? Uh, if you're good at estimating here, this is about $6, this is about $7. Six and seven add up to 13, so that seems reasonable. So you can also see that three plus four does equal seven. So you can also use some of that approximating skill and see if you can do it in a maybe a more simplistic way, but whatever way works for you is fine. Of course, you wanna go ahead and label your x-axis and y-axis. Along the x-axis, we have scoops, and I just went by one here. And along the y-axis, went by the cost, and I just did $1.89 for every one of these squares, okay? So for one scoop, it's gonna be $1.89. Two scoops is gonna be $3.78. Three scoops is $5.67, so all these ordered pairs. Four scoops is $7.56, and we skip to uh, seven scoops, and that's gonna be up here at $13.23. Connecting all these and drawing an arrow, this would be our linear equation, or linear graph rather, that represents this ratio. So there you have four different practice problems where you take an original ratio or rate, and you go ahead and fill in a data table dealing with some ordered pairs where you have X and Y. Then we went ahead and just plotted that on the coordinate plane to show the linear relationship. And for ratios, these should always go through the origin, so make sure that's something you keep track of as well. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, keep it the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.